Lord, I believe you have laid down your life for me. Jesus, Jesus, every praise I receive, Lord, I give them all over to you. Every song that I sing, all my trophies I bring, Lord, I give them all over. I will love to tell you what I think of Jesus Cause I found in him a friend so pure and true And I will tell you I will change my life completely He has done for me what no other friend could do No one ever cares for me like Jesus There's no other friend so kind as he No one else could take my sins and darkness from me Oh how much he cares No one ever cares for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as He. Oh, no one else could take my sins and darkness. Oh, how much! Thank you, my Father. Yeah, my cry, O oh Lord, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. And when my heart is over, please lead me to the rock that is higher than now. That is higher than now. Yeah, my cry, yeah, my cry. Jesus name we worship clap your hands and take your seat God bless you hallelujah we have access to fair salvation when Jesus comes into your life you become righteous he put his gift he was blameless so you have by making you spotless and blameless how do you now carry yourself how do you now maintain yourself it's called holiness has he made you pure yes has he made you righteous yes we have become the righteousness of god we have become the because in adam all of us sinned 
everybody's sin. That is why even a baby that is born today is a sinner. Why? Because of the sin of Adam. Their life. I will break holiness in three dimensions for you to understand. Holiness is the key to a long run for lifting until you turn from sin. It's 96 verse 9. The beauty of holiness. Holiness beautifies. Why do I lead holiness? When I live a life of holiness, it gives me beauty. High flyer. Holiness makes you a high flyer in God. Every high flyer is a purified vessel. Every high flyer is a purified vessel. Listen to me. God is looking for young men. God is looking for young women. God is looking for vessels. God is looking for people to use. God is looking for people to raise or people to lift. God is so much desperate for vessels. God is so desperate for vessels. He's desperate for people to announce. He's desperate for people to lift. He's desperate for people to use. He's desperate for people to make great. But no matter how desperate God is, he will not use unpurified vessels. Am I talking to somebody here? No matter. In session now? They are not in session? It's partially. Okay. But every year there are new intakes. The gates is open. Students are, are, are invited. Are welcome. But sir. No matter how desperate they are for students. There are entry requirements. There are one unilag, fasting and seeking the face of God to become a vessel in our world. She was seeking the face of God. One, she wanted to use it. It was dirty. She locked it. She opened the third one. She locked it. So wow, which one is clean? And the Lord said, "Stop." That is how I want to use you, but you are too dirty. That is how I want to use you, but you are too dirty. There are many of us who abandoned the basics. This is just, and they are living in the same house and they are not married. Make a ban eat. Go and make a ban and eat. It's a waste of fast. I mean, you finish your fasting, coming to life in the spirit from the house of somebody who has not paid your dowry. Coming to life in the spirit from the house of somebody who is not your husband. The person that brought you to church is someone you slept in his house last night and he brought you to church today. So in other words, you are trying to say to God, I have been committing this thing behind you. Now I have brought the man to your house. What can you do? There are so many of us who are desperate for prosperity, desperate for promotion, desperate for lifting, but we forget that without holiness, no man, you want to enjoy rest? You must deliberately begin. I've seen all kinds of people who are desperate. They are so interested in what God can give. Lord, the pureness of heart shall be the king's friend. So if God must be my friend, I must be his friend, then I must desire pureness of heart. Am I communicating here? Am I communicating? So God took him to the house of Jethro to test his morality. Before everybody is leading the wilderness, start getting pregnant. As you are still in that handset, there is a big eye on the sky that is watching you. As you are taking that phone, as you are doing that, there is something that is observing you. The fear of God is making God priority. The fear of God is putting God first. The fear of God is understanding that God sees all things. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, Galatians 6 verse 7. Impurity is a battle. Against you. Three things that you must assess. That, let me say holy. Number one, the way you treat God. If God is not priority to you, if God is not your focus, if God is not number one, you end up number last. To treat God as a toy makes you end up toiling. How do you treat God? How do you treat the work of God? How do you treat the things of God? Where you treat the instructions given to you. How can a person be in church? He's not a worker. He's, he's indifferent. He's just there. He's not in the department. How do you treat God? 
you have been in church for five years treat your house is that how you treat your you treat god by the way you wake up in the morning the first thing you do is to grab your phone when you have not spoken to god you wake up in the morning you have not gone to your knees to pray you have not opened the bible to study you grab your phone how do you treat god there are people, the last time they opened their Bible was last Sunday here. When I say tonto, they, they tonto. Tonto, they tonto. Today, they tonto again. And you've not asked yourself, did you treat God? What, what is the reference? We are in the church. Am I correct? We are in the church. I've seen some of my daughters who have sent me messages here. And I said, oh, that's it that God is in a place their mentality can get a job hold on let me, let's, let me tell you something God is not going to scream in how you treat yourself how you treat yourself if some of you know sin you are royalty you cannot walk to a bar Have you ever seen all through the pictures and videos you saw of late Queen Elizabeth? Did you see our mini skirt? Did you see the late Queen Elizabeth on mini skirt? Okay, okay. That's too far. Let's come to Nigeria. Have you seen walking in public a governor's wife with micro mini? There are things they can't wear because of who they are. How you treat yourself is a reflection of how you see yourself. The world is already burning as an oven. Externally. Every year is burning. Every year is hot. There is pressure. Financial crisis in the world. You now carry cigarettes. The world is burning externally. You carry smoke and burn yourself internally. There are things, there are things you can't do. The world is born externally. You now carry grass. Wrap it in paper. Kings don't smoke weed. Royalty. And that, that is now something that are, I mean, <laughs> there are people who are now addicted. The way they treat themselves, addicted to drugs. Young men taking all kinds of drugs. Because they want to get high. Now they are addicted to those drugs. Destroying their livers. Destroying their kidneys. How you treat yourself. No matter what you take. It doesn't make you high. It makes you crazy. If you want to get high. Speak in tongues. There are people of drugs they are addicted today killing themselves that is why i said holiness makes you healthier holiness makes you healthier you are a young lady you have two three men you are dating imagine distress imagine distress why put yourself under that kind of pressure you have to lie to this one you have to lie to that one you have to tell this one a lie and imagine a particular day that three of them wants to see you. What kind of, why are you, how do you treat yourself? How do you treat yourself? You put yourself under un, unnecessary pressure. Unnecessary pressure. You are a young man, you have engaged two people. Especially like this generation, where many ladies, once they hear marriage, they don't care. Marriage is like on your mat. And we have a lot of young men. Let me tell you this, ladies. There are so many young men who are lying. Keeping people in traps. Raising the hopes of people. <laughs> How do you treat yourself? When we tell you that if anybody approaches you in this church, you should tell us. You think we are trying to control you. They're trying, they trying to, no, 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 nobody can tell me what to do. I'm an adult. Nobody can control me. Nobody. No, 
body. Papa should go and ask my father now. She asked me, nobody tell me what to do. We left you to do your own thing. How far? When we tell you, come and tell us. It's not because we want to match make. It's because we know people. We know the brothers in this church. Forget all, this. Forget all the prayer they are praying. No, we know them. Forget all those worship and the rest. Bad guys. We know them. So when we say, tell us. Is to know if that person has brought somebody to us. That is why they will tell you, let's not tell Papa yet. Let's keep it low. Because they know that we know. Same thing with the ladies. Let's, let's not take it that serious yet. She wants to collect your money. So we say, bring them. First of all, we, we look at them with the eyes of the physical. They will now look at them with the eyes of the spirit. Physical eyes. Many brothers in this church will never come with you to see me. I'm just telling you now. In case you're in that category of let's keep it low. I'm telling you why. Whoever wants to marry you will not be ashamed of you. Am I talking to somebody here? treat yourself you have money you know there's so many of us who do not understand that God when God tells you to live holy is to help you there is nothing God wants to prove he's already God he created the heavens and the earth he, uh, he's already God there's nothing God will do now to make him God <laughs> he's already God so he has nothing to prove Oh Lord, heal me to show you are God. And God, we ask, who created the heavens and the earth? Is he your father? <laughs> so do I have to heal you to show I'm God? I'm God. Whether you are healed, you are not healed. I'm God. A young lady met in America. He said, I've been bleeding. And I said to God, I will just stay throughout this program. That if I'm not healed, I will know you are not a man of God. And now I'm healed. She was telling me outside. I said, God bless you. I walked away. He said, sir, you are not thanking God with me. I said, because even if you are not healed, I'm still a man of God. It doesn't change it. It doesn't change it. I don't need your endorsement. I know who I am. I don't need your endorsement. Over my, I don't need your endorsement. I know God. I know his voice. I work with him. So I don't need your endorsement. When God tells you, Job 22 verse 2, your pleasing God is not to help God. Your working with God is not to help God. Can a man be profitable unto God? As he that is wise may be profitable to himself? Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? Or is it gain to him that thou make thy way perfect? Will, will your not lying give God the fruit of the womb? You're not telling lies. Will he give God the fruit of the womb? You're refusing to drink. Will he give God financial breakthrough? You're refusing to lie. Will he protect God from accident? So what is your... Everything God tells you to do is for your good. When God says avoid this, avoid that, is to take your life from crisis. When God says don't lie, it's because God knows when you lie, you need another lie to cover the lie. There are some people that lie and you are wondering, nobody's putting a gun on your head. You just lie. You just lie and it's nothing to you, just lie. Someone said something to me over the week and I was calm. And he said, you are calm. I said, yeah, because you said the truth. You don't kill people for saying the truth. No matter how the truth makes you look, it sets you free. Can I repeat that? No matter how the truth makes you look, it sets you free. Once you say the truth, even if there are repercussions, you are free. When you lie, you live in fear. You live in fear. Continuous fear. And you'll be exposed. A young boy came to my office with a beautiful girl and said he wants to get married to her. And I couldn't re relate the boy and the girl. 
It was like light and darkness. And I looked at the young girl. I asked her a question. Good English. Well spoken. Very articulate. I, I say, how? In my heart, I was worried for her because I know him. But you know, as a father, I will not embarrass my child. I will not come out and just... But I know him, so I was looking at him. I was worried. Now, you brought, you know, you brought this person to me. And one of the things... I, I, he took me to Papa. Papa said, we should go ahead. So if he's bad, Papa would have said so. So I told the young girl to go outside. I said, wait outside. And I look at him. I said, bro, bro. He said, my father, my father. And I shouted as I begin to pray. <laughs> he said, my father, my father. I said, as I begin to pray, he started laughing. I said, sure, you know what I want to ask? He said, ah, papa, somebody can change. I said, you. I said, forget about that one. Where on earth did you meet this girl? How did you come? She said, Papa, she has two cars, oh, two cars. Uh -huh. I said, you are, you are gradually exposing yourself. How do you meet this guy? Hold on. There are some ladies that are just pretty, educated, saying no sense. Their heart is so open and they believe anything. This young boy was in the filling station he was talking to his friend and this girl was buying fuel and a convoy of cars the governor of the state was passing and this boy went and hid he was talking to the lady and he hid and the cars passed he said ah oh, thank god say what my popsy my dad just passed i said is that what you did he said yes sir and i said okay bring her in papa beg papa beg papa beg papa beg papa papa please. i said bring her in so I said to her, do you know what he does? He said, yes, yes, sir. It's his excellency's son. <laughs> I laughed. I said, who? He says, his excellency's son. <laughs> you know, in my heart, what was just going through my mind? The most excellency is Jesus. <laughs> this one? <laughs> excellency what? He was behind her. I was doing like this. I said to her, I said, well, forget about who his father is or who his father is not. Focus on him. She said, that's true. I said, focus on him. Focus on him. Forget about who the father is, who the father is not. Especially who the father is not. Okay? <laughs> I have told you what I want to tell you. Focus on him. Two weeks later, he comes to the office looking sad. She, the lady says she's no more interested. She has found out that he's not. <laughs> you lie. You have to tell a lie to cover the lie. You are squatting, you are squatting. Why lying? You don't have a house, you don't have a house yet. To, listen, there is a future ahead of you. Why trying to impress anybody? You, are, you came to this world to express, not to impress. When you keep trying to impress, you'll be depressed. Why lying? Why lying? And there's so many of us who are living, we are, we are living on eggshell now, on time, like time bombs. Walking on eggshells because of so many lies. And the truth is it, there are some of you hearing the sound of my voice. People cannot be truthful to you because of how you react to the truth. You are not following what I'm saying. How you react to the truth. There are some of you women, you like to hear what you want to hear. Who is this girl that I'm calling you? Who is this girl that I'm calling you? You say we are just friends. No, don't lie to me. Am I a fool? Do you think I'm a fool? Who in the air am I calling you? He say we are just friends. He's a lie. How can somebody be calling you and say, dear, dear, 
How will you call you dear? How will you call you dear? Who is this person? And the man has to cook up. Okay, sorry. This is my sister's cousin. The one that is related. Share that's what you want to hear. The way you react to the truth is what determines what people tell you. Learn to accept the truth even if it hurts you. Learn to accept the truth. Number three. Holiness is expressed by the way you treat people. The way you treat people. Sir, there is something called future. Whatever you do to anybody today, remember there is a future. Wherever you treat people, you cause people pain. You make people cry. There's a future. Even if you don't cry in your lifetime, your children may repeat. You are a lecturer. A woman struggled, sold a wrapper. The father went to, of the girl went to the farm, sold yams, sold crops to pay the daughter's school fees. That girl is like their only hope. They are doing their best to train the girl. I knew the lecturer has become the obstacle on her life. The hope of a family, you have become the obstacle. If she doesn't do this, she will, she will have carryovers. If she doesn't bring this, you don't know there's a future. Mr. Lecturer, you will have children. They will go to school. It will not be one lecturer that will be on them. It will be nine. Because you reap more than what you sow. There is a future. You, a young lady, you know you are not going to get married to a young man. You gave him hope. You collected his ring. Just to take his money. And when you are done, you already have somebody else. You marry that person. There's a future. When you start looking for children, you have to retrace your steps. You cannot hurt people God created and expect God not to reply you. You cannot destroy people. There are people, reputation that people have built for 20, 30, they will sit down in 10 minutes and tear it apart. When you are fighting a boy, a girl, a man, a woman, understand that person is connected to people. Why do you see that I hardly, before you see me respond, you see us deal with anybody, know that when they tell you what the person has done, even God is angry. When they tell even God, they say, ah, you have done too much. It's because when my, I know a lot of people tell Papa, let's deal with this person. I'll say, he has a mother. She has a father. She has a sister. She has people around. You fire somebody for just something flimsy. Because today you are the boss. I have seen fathers who told their children, get out of my house. I will never need you. There's nothing you have I will need. But years later, the fathers and the mothers were down. It was that needless, so to speak, child. Because the parents were saying what they were saying. Because they were not thinking of the future. Everything you do in life, you must think of the future. Anything you are doing, anything you are doing. Sometimes when my wife and I, when mama and I, we bless people. You think we don't have projects? You think we don't have need? Nobody needs money than us. We need it more than Central Bank. We need it a lot because of projects here and there. I have crusades lined up. If I tell you what one costs, you will scream. Going around the world, I'm visiting 30 countries this year. 30. Those are not local crusades. See, you are clapping as if you are paying. You are clapping. Those are not interstates. Those are not crusades within the country. Cost a lot. So I can't afford one naira means a lot to me. Because I need to preach the gospel. I need to preach the word of God. But we are doing all this. We are setting a legacy. Because we are thinking of the future. The future. How do you treat people? How do you take people? You, nobody stays in position forever. No matter what you are today, what you have access to, understand that you can have everything, but you may not have tomorrow. How do you treat people? You carry your wife, you treat her like a rat, and that's somebody's child. Your daughter will get married. You are a landlord today, you are intimidating people because you own one house. That you built in the 70s. I was asking some people, I said, we have to discuss this. How can people who built their house 1975, 76, 
People that build the house, 2020 are increasing rent. You too, you increase rent. What is, what is your justification? People who build their house in the... <laughs> Hallelujah. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man saw it, that shall he reap. If I go on and tell you stories upon stories upon stories of what I've seen happen to people's life by reason of the way they treat people. Before you react, think. There's a future. Whatever you have today, God gives you money, God gives you a voice, God gives you a platform and that platform you are using to undo people. You have become a lecturer that everybody knows to be wicked. And you pride in it, ask them in this school, I'm wicked. Ask anybody, I am wicked. There are people who pride in that. There are young girls who pride in that. They pride that they can destroy any marriage. Imagine a girl telling a woman, your husband, I will take him from you. They say that with audacity. I will take him from you. And they actually took the weary from her. And at the end of the day, you are hoping to get married as a young lady and you are praying for your own to stay stay where even God will be angry if your marriage stay for what you have done to people you will feel the pain they felt you will cry they cry they cried I'm not cursing I'm telling the truth the pain you made them feel you feel it That once some, once some women, some women are even afraid for their husbands to come to church. Their husband is in church, you are eyeing him. You are eyeing, I, I, I. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are the secretary of a man. And you are, you are secretary with everything. You are secretary with everything. Your dressing, your appearance, everything. You are secretary in him. You have destroyed many people as a secretary. You have been secretary to five men and you have destroyed five homes. You are a man. And you are even you serve as a man. You are not the only one with secretary. We have to also talk to you. You see, whatever you are not comfortable with, cut it off. Whatever you are not comfortable with. I want to ask you a question. Many of you think that there are certain people that don't get tempted. Is that what you think? Everybody has got blood flowing in their veins. Are you following what I'm saying? There are temptations you will see. You run. I was in South Africa, the first time I went to South Africa. I didn't know what South Africa was like. I went there genuinely, <laughs> genuine, sincerely to go and preach the gospel. I preached, I prophesied, but I noticed there was no excitement. I was prophesying on people. They were no excited. They were just looking at me. No excitement. I said, okay. I went back to where I was staying, and the young man comes in with three people. He said, every year it's cold. I said, yes, it's, it's cold. Are you sure you are okay? I said, I'm fine. Do you need t-shirts? I came with clothes. I said, I have t-shirts. He said, oh, you don't understand. Do you need garments? Which one is t-shirt? Which one is garment? He said, because it is cold. I said, I'm okay, I'm fine. He said, so you are going to stay like that? There are garments of different sizes. Uh-uh. I have one size. Why will I need garments of different sizes? He said, oh, you don't understand. And he started, said, I mean garments. I mean garments. Just help yourself. It's, I mean, it's a normal thing to just take off the cold. I, said, I looked at my, my traveling bag. They were clothes. So what do I need clothes for? And he told me plainly what he meant. 
I said, Pastor. He said, Oh, don't worry. Okay. I said, Tomorrow, tomorrow. He said, Hey, tomorrow. I said, Tomorrow evening after the service. He said, Yes. I said, Yes, okay. As he left, I sent my wife a text. I said, I'm coming home. <laughs> I called the person that booked him. I called the person that booked my ticket. I said, Change my ticket to tomorrow morning. He said, Pastor, you have to pay. I said, It's better. I will pay. Straight from there to the airport. I just got married. Straight from there to the airport. I landed. And when I landed, he was sending me a text. He said, they came to pick you and they said, you are not there. I said, they kill you. <laughs> I'm in my country. Finish the program. Finish the program. Since you have become a boutique for garments and t-shirts. Finish. <laughs> finish the program yourself. Everyone must know that God wants you to live pure. How do you treat people? Before you send that message to somebody, read it to yourself. Before you send, you are stupid. Read it as, I am stupid. Before you send, you are mad. Read it as, I am mad. How does it sound to you? It doesn't sound right, then don't send it. Anything you want to put yourself in their shoes. There are things I want to do to people. I first put myself. How does this sound to me? I told you how God, we had securities. Elderly men. Mama is here. I don't talk to them. These are men in their 70s. In one of our houses, they come there. They are the security men. They open the gate. Sometimes they need to turn on the gen. There's no light. I'm looking at my wife. She's looking at me. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her. I said, how do I go and tell a 75-year-old man? Please, to, how? I'm paying him. I take care of them. But that does not make them younger. That does, it's life that has not been fair to them. Your driver has become your slave. Your sales girl has become your slave. Every day she must chop slap. That is somebody's child. Oh, there's no kind of insult. Because you are not aware that life is full of twists and turns. You are not aware that that person today that you are treating shabbily, that you are looking down on, can become your source of help tomorrow. You are not aware that that person you see as a nobody can become the only reason for your breathing tomorrow. You are not aware that that person you are treating like trash can become a treasure tomorrow. How do you treat people? How do you treat people? How do you treat people? And there are so many of us. This is the reason why certain things cannot happen. There are women that will, that will never go to heaven because of how they treat their house help. As they stand on the queue, they are about going there. The house help will shout from behind, Excuse me, Lord. Madame cannot enter. Madam cannot enter. You are not an unjust God. You are a honest God. Lord, even you know that Madame is wicked. You bought clothes for your children. Your house help. She has no clothes except three boo boo. Mazi. And that's how she's following you to market. You are slapping her that she's not smart. Who can be smart inside boo boo? You already, seen, you already seen the way your children are? Because of the way you treat people's children. Look at your children. They are becoming like touts. Nobody can correct them. They cannot stay in anybody's house. Look at the name you even gave them. Bomboy. They are becoming like touts as a reward to your wickedness on people's children. So you now have children that are touts. Many children today who are nasty is because God wants to punish the parents for how they treated people's children. I wish I was talking to somebody here. Number three, and then I'll pray. The third battle for your rest is anti prophecies, prophecy forces. Anti or anti prophecy forces. If you must see rest, you must battle.
battle against anti-prophecy forces in first kings chapter 1 from verse 12 to verse 13 a man called nathan saw a lady called Bathsheba and said to Bathsheba go and tell your husband that did you not speak a word or give a promise that solomon shall reign after you how come adonijah is reigning solomon had a prophecy to become king solomon has a prophecy to take the throne after david but adonijah became king in the place of solomon meaning there was a prophecy that solomon had but adonijah was fighting the prophecy anytime god gives a prophecy to a person there are forces that rise up to fight that prophecy there was a man in the bible called elisha another called jehu another called aziel god was speaking to elijah in first kings chapter 19 he said as you leave you shall anoint elisha to be prophet in your stead you shall anoint El 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 jehu to be king of israel you shall anoint aziel and as he left elijah anointed elisha he anointed aziel he forgot to anoint jehu jehu had a prophecy and as soon as ahab died jehu was supposed to be the next king but because he was not anointed someone ascended the throne for two years after that person another person ascended the throne for 12 years so for 14 years the prophecy of jehu was hanging because there was an anti-prophecy force that said the prophecy would not come to pass until one day elisha suddenly remembered that the very day he was anointed jehu was supposed to be anointed so he said to them go to the house and you shall ask at that jehu and if he says i'm the one call him aside anoint him and as you anoint him run why because his prophecy is overdue he has an anointing to slaughter an anointing to slay jehu became discouraged 14 years of prolonged prophecy he joined the military he became a soldier when prophecy is delayed that is when the to give option the devil gives you alternative there are people who are doing what they are not supposed to do because they have a delayed prophecy there are people doing jobs they are not supposed to do because there's a prophecy that has been delayed i come in the volume of the books as it is written of me to make a declaration in the name of jesus every prophecy of your life everything that god has said you will be that is hanging in the atmosphere i activate it I activate it. Hey man. I activate it. Hey man. I activate it. Hey man. I say I activate it. Hey man. Every prophecy. The Bible says in First Timothy one verse eighteen. He said, "My son Timothy, concerning the prophecy that has gone ahead of you, that by them thou mayest walk a good warfare. By them thou mayest walk a good warfare. By them." Thou mayest walk a good warfare. I decree whatever is delaying your prophecy today it shall be roasted. Hey, Lord. Genesis 15 13. God said to Abraham, Thy seed shall be in the strange land for 400 years. But after 430 years, Exodus 12 and verse 40, 430 years later, that prophecy came to pass. How many years? 430. Talk to me. How many years? Talk to me. How many years? After 430 years, the prophecy came to pass. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 26, the Bible says, God said, Whosoever builds Jericho shall lay the foundation with his first son and shall complete it with his last son. And in 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 34, after 70 years, that prophecy came to pass. After how many years? The first one was after how many years? The second talk to me the second the second second kings chapter 4 if you read from verse 16 the bible says a prophecy was given and he said according to the, this season according to the time of life thou shall have a son one year later that prophecy came to pass after how long what is the first what is the second what is the third Elisha prophesies over the house of Israel in 2 Kings 7 verse 1 he said by this time tomorrow a measure of flying flour shall be sold for a shekel after 24 hours that prophecy came to pass after how long after how long 
the first one was how long the second the third the fourth the bible says in matthew 26 and verse 34 jesus was speaking concerning peter he said before the cock crows thou this night thou shalt deny me twice six hours later that prophecy came to pass the first one was how long the second the third the fourth the fifth in Isaiah chapter 38 from verse 2 to 3 and 4 God said to Isaiah say to Ezekiah put your house in order for you shall surely die as soon as Isaiah was turning back five minutes later God said return for you shall not surely die how long the first is how many years the second the third the fourth the fifth the ceased maybe you are waiting for 430 years maybe you are waiting for 70 years maybe you are waiting for one year <laughs> maybe you are waiting for 24 hours maybe you are waiting for six hours but there is somebody under the sound of my voice <laughs> in the next five minutes <laughs> in the next five minutes <laughs> every prophecy <laughs> of your life i see them coming to pass <laughs> coming to pass Amen. I see them coming to pass Amen. it will not be 430 years <laughs> it will not be 70 years Amen. it will not be one year it will not be 24 hours <laughs> it will not be 6 hours Amen. in the next 5 minutes <laughs> to as many as are connecting to this world <laughs> in the next 5 minutes in the next 5 minutes <laughs> in the next 5 minutes <laughs> every prophecy of your life <laughs> prophecy concerning your marriage <laughs> prophecy concerning your home prophecy concerning your health prophecy concerning your children prophecy concerning your ministry prophecy concerning your husband prophecy concerning your wife that is hanging in the atmosphere that the devil has stolen I see it manifesting Amen. 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 I see it coming to pass hey. contending what God has said Solomon had a prophecy I'm about to pray remember, remember standing it was Adonijah his brother that was sitting on his seat nothing nothing for straight prophecy like family altar we are going, we are going to pray listen can you, can you remember this word for the rest of your life? Can I tell you this? He that has conquered 
the power of his father's house and his mother's house has conquered the world. In Songs of Solomon chapter 1, if you read verse 6, he said, look not on me because I am black. Because the sun has looked up on me. Why? My mother's children were angry with me. You hear me? Being dark is complexion. Being black is condition. That's why there is no white man. There are no white men. What color is this? Have you seen any human being this color? So there's nothing like white man. He said, I am black. Why? Because my mother's children were angry with me. So they gang up against me. And they used the sun. So these are diabolic powers. What was my offense? Why are they against me? He said, they made me keeper of their vineyard. My own vineyard. I have not kept. They want me to keep carrying their burden. They want me to carry their load. Listen to me. Oh. Listen. I'm one of you young ladies. I believe in God for a wonderful home. Let me pray. So shall it be. But can I give you a counsel? If you're a young lady and you're praying to marry a rich man, pray for God to give you heart. You want to marry a wealthy man? You need to guard yourself with heart. Because the family will come for you. There are so many women suffering from what they don't know. Because they believe anything the man is not doing is the woman that is saying, don't do it. So women are suffering. The women don't even have such influence over their husband. No. Because one of the signs of wealthy men is that they are stubborn. You have to be stubborn to be wealthy. Because they made me keeper. When taking care of them, no problem. But let me focus on myself. Problem. Family altar. Matthew 10, 36, a man's enemy are members of it. You are going to enter your family today. You enter. <laughs> family altar. Who killed Abel? Who killed Abel? Who threw Joseph in the pit? Who, who challenged David when he was about to kill Goliath? Now, hold on. I'm not teaching you how to, how to suspect your family. But I'm also telling you that everybody is a suspect. I heard someone say that once you are born again, that there are people that go up with all kinds of teaching. That once you are a Christian, hold on on that K. Okay. That once you are a Christian, they believe that something can fight you. That as a Christian, nothing can fight you. And I was laughing. I wasn't angry at the person because people speak based on the knowledge available to them. I've traveled around the world and I can tell you. I can tell you. Altars are real. There are people in church who are witches. In this state, there is a, a particular town. In 2002, I was going to preach there. I got angry when they were telling me they were killing pastors. That if you go there, you come back, you are sick. Either your leg is swollen. And I know two people who went there. One of them came back mad. A pastor. No, no, I went there swollen. He came back. It's scrotum. This I was working. So I got angry. I said, I want to go there. People said, don't go. I said, I want to go there. So I prayed and I asked the Lord. The Lord said, go. I'm with you. So I went there. I ministered that first day. I insulted witches. I abused them. I said all kinds of things. Nothing happened to me. I, I said, nothing has happened to me now. In the evening again, I insulted, abused them. 
I even mentioned the place I'm staying that they should come. Nothing happened to me. I said, ah. Not even scratch. I said, okay, this time I will get physical. So I went there. I said, I don't have time for this morning session. I don't have time to waste. If you are a witch, go home. Church, empty. I said, if you are a witch, stand up now and get out. I'm going to come to tell. One! Pew! I had to say, stop, stop. I don't mean those that eat in the dream. Not that you are eating the dream. Or you are, I mean you are a witch. You go to Kovu. He said, hey, now. I put my hand on my head. In fact, I regretted. Listen, listen. I regretted that. I, I regretted that action. I was telling the pastor who went with me. I said, church empty. He said, hey, now. You are the one that drove everybody. I said, I didn't drive everybody. I drove witches. Yeah, uh, did they tell you they are not witches? There was a deaconess who went to take her child from. So we were looking at her. She left the altar, took her child from somebody, and she went out. So I said, "You should stop her." That I'm not seeing ministers. I said, "Which is?" She said, "She knows now, and <laughs> that she knows so she's going out." Brazen. They don't hide it. Those are the kind of people you are going to tell that um, nothing can stand against them. They are the ones standing against things, and then church. And there are some of you looking at me now. You don't know why you are behaving the way you are behaving. Something just come on you to do certain things. It's an altar. It's an altar. A pastor gave a testimony here. He prays for help that God should bring help us. When God brings help us and he wants to talk, his tongue will be gummed. He gave the testimony here. What do you need? You are not serious. They walk away. There are altars. When some people start behaving certain way, there are people that God opened the door for them, they close the door with their hands. Because there's something from their father's house that doesn't want them to stand out. Abba. We are sitting down in the plane, some, I think last year or last two years. I was going to one country. All of a sudden, I heard noise behind the plane. They were dragging with a young man. So, other people came, they held him. Me, I sat down because what does not concern me? I was looking. And the pilot said that they have to do emergency landing. Uh -uh. We have not reached where we are going. So, he started making contact with the, country, the closest control tower. And they landed. Before they landed, security was waiting. They held him out. What was the problem? He was smoking inside the laboratory. And everybody knows in the plane, you don't smoke. He stayed in that toilet for five hours flight. You can't wait. Now family altar. And the alarm in the, in the, in the, in the laboratory came on. Bah, bah. And they held him. And I asked myself a question. For just five hours, something went... Imagine somebody going to a destination and couldn't get there because something provoked him. The reason why you should understand life there are certain things with your clear eye you won't do, you won't say, but there's some there's an evil pattern in the bloodline, there's something in the bloodline that wants to render you like others. We are going to attack it today. For 10 minutes, we are going to pray. We are going to ask that by the blood of Jesus, every power that silences people in our background, I have escaped. I have escaped. That power that silences people from my background, in the name of Jesus, I have escaped. Somebody say, my father, my father. No. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. Every power. Every power. Silencing me. And women, Silence Silence and women. From, my background. from my background, I have escaped. 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 I have escaped.